So, you want to be able to say, hey, I use Arch, by the way. Um, if you're looking at this video, then you're probably looking at how to get started in installing Arch Linux. And in 2024, installing Arch Linux is very, very easy. It used to be complicated, and it's renowned. It has a reputation for being complicated to install. That used to be the case. Not so much anymore. I'm going to walk through and show you how to install it. Sheridan Computers. IT. Communications. Support. So I'm doing this on Proxmox. Um, it doesn't matter whether you do it on bare metal, it's a similar type of procedure. The first thing we need to do is to go ahead and to grab the Arch Linux ISO. So we're going to do Arch Linux download. And we've got Arch Linux downloads. So Arch Linux.org forward slash download. And then you need to choose at the bottom of the, the downloads page. We've got various mirrors in various countries. And you're going to want to choose one that's close to yourself. I'm in the UK and I'm going to grab Melbourne because I know that's a trusted and a quick mirror. Now you're just going to want to click on this and download it if you're burning it to a flash drive or something to install that way. Uh, I'm just going to copy the URL because I'm going to download the ISO into Proxmox. So I'm just going to copy link. Get rid of that. I'm going to go into Proxmox. Uh, I'm going to local storage, ISO, and I want to download from URL. And I'm just going to paste that link that we copied. So query URL. So you can see the file size is 1.09 gig. Um, so how long it takes to download will obviously vary on the speed of your internet connection. So we're going to click download. And then we'll just wait for this ISO to download. Okay, so we've got our ISO downloaded. Um, so there it is, Arch Linux. So once you've downloaded it, and say burn it to a USB flash drive, get it to the state that you're going to install it from or whatever. Uh, now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create a new virtual machine for this. So I'm going to new create a virtual machine. I'm just going to call it Arch, keep it simple. Next. So choose my ISO image so I'm going to choose my arch image the rest of the options if you're doing this on Proxmox you can leave as default so I'll type Linux version 6.x uh, my graphics card I'm just going to change this to IO because I'm using Proxmox BIOS if you're using Proxmox the recommended is OVMF for a UEFI choose a storage and then I'm going to go I want the QEMU agent because I'm using Proxmox uh, disks we can leave as default uh, for now. I'm just going to next that. CPU sockets one. I'll give it two cores for the CPU and leave the rest as default. I'm going to disable ballooning and give it. So I don't want dynamic memory. I'm just going to give it four gig of RAM. Networking we can leave as is. Go ahead and finish. Uh, and you can see we've got our Arch ISO that's appeared here. So say we need to go into the BIOS and disable um, secure boot. So to do this on Proxmox, let me start this. Uh, just keep pressing the escape key to get us into the BIOS. Then we want to go into device manager, uh, secure boot configuration, and press space on that to turn it off. Save it. Yeah. So you need to disable secure boot in order for the Arch ISO to be able to boot. Uh, and we'll just reboot the VM. Uh, so we're going to choose the default installer option. And that puts us on the Arch Live installer. From this bit, I'm going to um, SSH into this just so I can make the console a little bit bigger so we can see what we're doing. So I'm going to get the IP address. You don't need to worry about this. I'm just doing it to make the console bigger. So we're on 10.1.10.107. .10 so I should be able to SSH into that. Oh, no, I need to set the root password. You can't SSH in without a password. So just 
passwd password and then we can ssh in so ssh root at 10 on 10 yep password okay so we're back at the arch installer prompt um so to install we just need to do um arch install So you've got your language. Um, this installer is um, just a lot easier to install Arch than it used to be. So we're going to select a mirror that's close to us. So let's go to mirrors, mirror region. Uh, and then I want United Kingdom. So we can go back. Uh, we need to set the disk configuration. Uh, and go to partitioning. Now, I'm not going to go into manual partitioning in this video. It's just how to get Arch up and running. I have done videos on manual partitioning before. So we're going to do use best effort. Now, this will wipe any partitions that are on your disk. So just be aware of that. Uh, so if you're trying to dual boot, you don't want to use this option. If you're just doing a fresh install on a clean hard drive, this option is fine for you. So we're going to go into that. We're going to select the disk. And you can see it's showing us the uh, partition layout that it's going to use there. So I'm just going to go. Okay, I'm going to use BTRFS for the uh, file system that allows us to do snapshots and things. Uh, would you like to use sub volumes? Yes, we do. And use compression. I'm going to go back. Uh, and the next thing we're going to configure uh, is disk encryption. If you want to enable encryption, you can do. Uh, I'm not going to do that in this video. So, um, the next thing is bootloader and we're going to set this to grub you can set your host name and then a root password so so you can create a user account uh, which is your normal account to log into the system so we're going to add a user and then should the user be added to super user so sudo group yes we are not Confirm and exit. Um, so with that, we've set up the mirrors, um, the locale of the set that. No, you need to set your, obviously your country. <laughs> That's fine. Back. Um, so your disk type, uh, encryption settings, bootloaded grub, um, swap file, host name, your root password, your user account. So we're going to go to profile. Now this is where we can choose what profile the system is going to use what we're going to use it for so we're going to profile type we can use desktop minimal which will just give you the minimal installation server or xr now we want desktop and you can choose the desktop that you want you can also choose multiple desktops now i'm going to go with kde plasma um a graphics driver if you use an amd graphics card obviously set it to amd similar with intel if you're using an nvidia graphics card then you're going to want this uh, proprietary nvidia one um, i'm just going to leave it on all open source so greeter sddm that's fine so that's a login manager uh, audio so you need to set the audio up and we have two options so obviously you've got the option of no audio uh, pipe wire or pulse audio so Pulse Audio is the uh, older audio system and Pipewire is a more current one. So normally you'd like to go with Pipewire. And if you want to put additional packages in, you can do uh, as long as you've got internet connections. So you can just put the packages in that you want there. Network configuration. Uh, we want to use Network Manager. Set your time zone. So I want Europe, London. Find it. Come on. So set your time zone. Uh, if you want to specify any optional repositories, such as multi-lib, if you plan on running 32-bit binaries uh, on the 64-bit. Uh, and then we can just do install. It will show you the current configuration that we're going to use. Just going to press enter to that. 
And it's going to format the drive and install the packages. Install is completed. Um, so it's asking if you'd like to ch root into your current system to make any changes. Uh, we're not going to do, we're just going to reboot straight into the system. So I'm going to go no. And that's it, we're done. So the installation completed without any errors. Uh, you may now reboot. So because I'm on Proxmox, I'm just going to um, close that. And then uh, I'm just going to reboot it from here. And I'm going to remove the um, ISO. Back to the console. We're up and running. Um, there's a uh, SDDM login, so we can choose whether we want to use X11 or Wayland. Uh, KD has support for Wayland. There's nothing we need to do to configure that any extra. So we'll just log in. Welcome. So welcome to Arts Linux. Let's skip through this. You now have an up and running Arch Linux. So I'm just going to go into console. And make sure the system's up to date. So we can just do sudo. Uh, Minus S by U. Minus S by U. Sorry, keyboard's a bit slow. Pseudo Patman minus S by U to make sure the system's up to date. So you can see there was a couple of updates to do after we'd uh, done the initial install. And now we're good. Uh, sudo pacman minus s neo fetch. And there you have Arts Linux installed. Um, I'm going to settings. So we're on Plasma 6.2.0 uh, and you can see we've got the QEMU virtual version, so we are fully running. Uh, I'm just going to log out of here just to show you that uh, if we leave, log out. If you don't want to use Wayland, um, you can also use X11. Um, Wayland should be fine for you in most cases. I'm actually recording this video on um, Wayland. One of the things that I do like about Wayland is the fact that you can scale individual monitors. Um, so, uh, what do we do about... So uh, you can see we're now using X11 instead of Wayland. So you can switch between the two quite easily. Um, so one of the things in X11 is when you go to display configuration, if you've got multiple monitors, such as I have, um, you get a global scale, which scales all your monitors. So I am using a 4K monitor and a non-4K monitor. So the 4K monitor, I need to scale separately from the rest of the monitors, which you can't do in uh, X11, but you can't in Wayland. So I'd suggest using Wayland as much as possible. 
um, and see how you go with it. If you need to switch to X11, then you can do. The choice is yours, which one you use. Um, so I'm using Wayland, like I say, um, as you can see, graphics platform, Wayland, this is my system. Um, and what I was, my like graphics scaling, um, I've got a display configuration. You can see I've got three monitors hooked up. Uh, we've got this 49 inch ultra wide Acer thing here. Um, so it has a strange resolution of 3840 by 1080. So you can see I've got the scaling for this monitor set at 100%. Um, I've got the TV up here, which is also at 100%. Now my 4K Iyama monitor, you see the scaling here is set to 150. Um, and that just that's just an excellent feature of Wayland. Uh, because if I have it set at 100, if I do it at normal now, and apply that, you can see everything goes, I can't even see it. Uh, whereas under X11, you can only scale globally across all monitors. So I can like set this at 200%, for example. Um, and now you can see it's scaled this monitor, but the rest of them have remained the same. So I generally set it's about 150. So I love that about Wayland. Um, it was one of the things that was stopping me moving from Windows completely and I had to keep booting into Windows because it was just a bit of a pain. Uh, anyway, you're done. If you're looking at using Arch, I hope you found this video useful. Uh, it's easier to install Arch Linux now than it has ever been using the um, Arch install script. If you do have any questions, um, please uh, head across to our forums, leave your questions there, and I'll take a look at them. If you found this video useful, um, give it a like, and consider subscribing to the channel. I'll try and cover more videos using Arch Linux. If there's anything particular you'd like me to cover, then um, please leave it in the comments. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.